Hello everyone, welcome back. This is part 10 of the design patterns tutorials. In this session, we will discuss what is abstract factory design pattern, implementation guidelines of abstract factory, and we'll take a look at an example to implement abstract factory. And we'll also discuss the major differences between abstract factory and factory method. Please refer to the previous parts of the tutorial before proceeding. Let's take a look at the Gang of Four definition about abstract factory pattern. As per the Gang of Four definition, the abstract factory pattern provides a way to encapsulate a group of individual factories that have a common theme without specifying their concrete classes. To simplify, the abstract factory pattern provides an interface for creating families of related or dependent objects without specifying their concrete classes. Abstract factory pattern belongs to creational patterns and is one of the most used design patterns in real world applications. We can say that abstract factory is a super factory that creates other factories. Now let's take a look at the implementation guidelines of abstract factory. We need to choose abstract factory pattern when the application need to create multiple families of objects or products and when we need to use only one of the subset of families of objects at a given point of time. And when we want to hide the implementation of the families of products by decoupling the implementation of each of these operations. Now if you take a look at the illustrated diagram of abstract factory representation, the client is a class which uses abstract factory and abstract product interfaces to create a family of related objects. Abstract factory is an interface which is used to create abstract product. Concrete factory is a class which implements the abstract factory interface to create concrete products. Abstract product is an interface which declares a type of product. Concrete product is a class which implements the abstract product interface to create product. If this is confusing at this moment, don't worry, as we are going to take a deep dive on implementing these points using a simple example. Now let's consider a business requirement where a company decides to hand out computers to contract and permanent employees based on the designation and employee type with below specification. Let's say a permanent employee who is a manager is eligible for Apple laptop and rest of non-managers are eligible for Apple desktop. Whereas in case of contract employee who is a manager he is eligible for Dell laptop and rest of non-managers are eligible for Dell desktops. The above business requirement can be achieved by leveraging on abstract factory pattern. Now let's bring up the Visual Studio and learn how we can implement the abstract factory pattern with our previous working example. Let's open the employee table and add a new column called computer details. Let's define the data type as varchar. Let's make it as 250 and let's click on update. Let's click update database. Update completed successfully. Now let's switch to the models and open employeeModel.edmx and let's right click on this model and the update model from the database. Let's click on refresh, expand the tables and let's refresh the employee table. The changes are updated successfully. Now let's create a new folder under factory folder. Right click add new folder and name this folder as abstract factory. Let's add some enumerations to support the business requirement. Let's right click and add new item and let's choose the class and name this class as enumerations. Let's create some enumerations related to our business requirement. Let's first create public enum computer types which are laptop and desktop. 
let's create another enumeration and let's call this enumeration as brands as we know that we need to hand out Apple and Dell brand desktops or laptops let's also create another enumeration and name it as processors and let's create some processors as i3 i5 and i7 let's now create abstract product interfaces which declares a type of product so right click on abstract factory folder add new item let's create an interface and name this interface as ibrand which returns brand name so let's name this method name as get brand and the back brand could be anything which could be Dell brand or Apple brand let's create another interface add new item choose interface and let's call this interface as I system type this interface will have a method which returns the system type and name it as get system type let's make this interface as public now let's create another interface named iProcessor right click add new item choose an interface and name this interface as iProcessor which returns a processor and let's create a method get processor and make this interface as public these three abstract product interfaces together compose a product which in our case would be a laptop or desktop with the specified configurations let's now implement these interfaces into concrete product classes let's right click on the abstract factory folder add new item choose a class and let's name this class as mac.cs which implements ibrand let's implement the ibrand method over here which is get brand and let's return brands dot apple dot to string let's resolve this issue by using the enumerations and let's return brands dot apple dot to string let's create another class right click add new item choose class and let's name this class as Dell which implements the iBrand let's implement the iBrand interface and let's return enumerations dot brands dot Dell dot to string to save some time I have already implemented the iProcessor interface for concrete products which are i5 and i7 I have also implemented the i system type to return the respective laptop or desktop as system types now that we have families of related products let's create an interface which composes these products right click on abstract factory folder add new item choose an interface let's name this interface as i computer factory let's add the products that we have created to this interface which are i processor let's name this as processor i brand brand and i system type as system type now let's create concrete factories which implements this abstract factory interface to create concrete products let's right click on this abstract factory folder add new item 
choose class and let's name this class as Mac factory so that it creates Apple laptop and desktop now let's inherit the I computer factory I computer factory and implement the interfaces now when we need to create a Mac factory let's say this is creating a new desktop then the brand would return as return new Mac as the brand and the processor would be i7 so let's say we will be creating a Mac desktop with i7 processor i7 and the system type would be return new desktop let's also create a Mac laptop factory so let's create it over here public class Mac laptop factory which inherits I computer factory now let's implement the interfaces implement interface and let's say the brand will be written new Mac and the processor will be written new i7 processor and the system type will be written new laptop now if you observe the Mac factory and the Mac laptop factory both has got the same brand as well as the processor the only difference between these two is the system type so let's refine it further and instead of inheriting the i computer factory for Mac laptop factory let's inherit from the Mac factory let's say Mac laptop factory inherits the Mac factory and let's remove these implementations and change this implementation as virtual system type so that we can override it here let's now create concrete factories which implements the abstract factory interface to create Dell products let's right click on the abstract factory folder add new item choose class and name this class as Dell factory which inherits from I computer factory let's implement the interface methods implement interface and let's return return new Dell as the brand and let's return the processor as i5 return new i5 and let's return the system type as return new desktop let's now create a laptop factory for Dell similar to the Mac laptop factory let's say public class Dell laptop factory which inherits Dell factory and we just need to override the system type so let's declare virtual over here and public override high system type which is system type and let's return new laptop now that we have implemented the abstract interfaces as well as concrete implementations to those abstract interfaces and products let's see how we can address the business requirement right click on the abstract factory add new item and choose a class and let's name this class as employee system factory let's create a method public which returns I computer factory and let's call this method as create which accepts the 
employee as the input parameter. Let's resolve this issue by using web.models. Let's declare the return value as i computer factory i computer factory return value equal to null if e dot employee type id equal to 1 which means he's a permanent employee then if the employee's job description is manager then for all the managers we are going to give laptop factories of Apple which means written value equal to new Mac laptop factory other than managers we are going to return or assign the written value equal to new Mac factory that means all the Mac desktops Now, if he's a contract employee, which means else if e dot employee type id equal to 2, which means contract employee, then if e dot job description equal to manager, we need to assign the written value as written value equal to new Dell laptop factory else written value equal to new Dell factory let's return the return value turn return value now let's create a client class which will be responsible to derive the system details based on the created concrete factories let's right click on the abstract factory folder add new item choose class and name this class as employee system manager and let's create a i computer factory underscore i computer factory essentializer let's create a constructor public employee system manager which accepts the input parameter as i computer factory computer factory and let's assign underscore i computer factory is equal to i computer factory let's create a method public string get system details which uses this iComputer factory and retrieves the respective brands, processor and system type. Let's say i branch branch equal to underscore iComputer factory dot brand and i processor processor equal to underscore iComputer factory dot processor i system type system type equal to underscore i computer factory dot system type let's assign the written value as string written value equal to string dot format of zero And two, which means brand dot get brand comma system type dot get type and processor dot get processor return return value. Let's resolve this error by making this i computer factory as a public interface public and let's switch back let's rearrange all the classes under the abstract factory folder based on the representation diagram 
which we have illustrated in the starting of this tutorial. Let's create a folder abstract product right click add new folder and name it as abstract product and let's move i brand i processor i system type under the new folder let's create a folder called concrete product right click add new folder and say concrete product and move all the concrete product implementations under this folder which are Mac Dell processors and computer systems let's create another folder add new folder and name this folder as concrete factory and let's move implementations related to abstract factory interface so let's move Mac factory Dell factory and employee system factory into this folder let's create another folder and name this as client new folder client and let's move the employee system manager under this folder let's also create a folder named abstract interface and let's move i computer factory underneath that I hope now you are clear with what we have implemented till here. Let's now integrate these changes and implement the requirement in the employees controller. Let's open the employees controller. Let's create the abstract factory here. I computer factory factory equal to new employee system factory dot create and let's pass the employee as a input parameter for the create method now let's use the client which we have created which is employee system manager manager equal to new employee system manager and which accepts this abstract factory manager dot get system details will retrieve the respective systems that we are handing off to the employees so let's say employee dot computer details equal to manager dot get system details let's now switch to the views expand employees and let's go to the index view and let's add this new column that we have created in the header which is model dot computer details let's also add this in the table data let's use the existing one and change this to computer details let's compile this application and let's run this application let's click on employees and create a new employee the name as George job description as manager P3456 as the number and department as IT Let's choose the employee type ID as permanent and let's click create. Notice that George who is a permanent employee and a manager is allotted an Apple laptop i7. Let's create another employee and let's name the new employee as Sebastian and let's put the job description as developer and the number as D2345 department as IT and let's choose employee type as permanent here as well let's click on create 
look at that Sebastian is created as developer with a computer details as Apple desktop i7 now before creating a temporary employee let's try to debug this application and see how it behaves let's put a breakpoint over here at the create method and let's run through this application let's create a new employee let's name this employee as Andrew job description as manager number as C 3456 department as IT and let's change the employee type to contract let's click on create now let's step into this code notice that since the employee type ID is equal to true and the job description is manager we are creating a Dell laptop factory and we are returning the abstract factory back to the client let's step in through the client look at that the abstract factory is getting initialized over here and then we are invoking the get system details which invokes the respective brand processor and system type and retrieves the corresponding values let's press F5 now notice that Andrew who is a contract manager is allotted with Dell laptop with i5 configuration with this we have successfully addressed the requirement by using the abstract factory design pattern now let's take a look at the major differences between abstract factory and factory method pattern the abstract factory design pattern adds a layer of abstraction to the factory method pattern abstract factory pattern implementation can have multiple factory methods similar products of a factory implementations are grouped in abstract factory as you have noticed abstract factory uses object composition to decouple application from specific implementations factory method uses inheritance to decouple applications from specific implementations I hope now you got familiar with the abstract factory design pattern in the next session we will discuss and learn another creational pattern please feel free to post your comments and feedback in the comment section thank you for listening and have a great day